they have to build a boat. One of the curriculum is they actually build and it has to float. And they have to take it out, you know, and they have to video this boat floating. Okay, so there's a lot of things that try to get them out of the classroom with their parents out on the water to complete the assignments. Um, we also have related in there places that parents can go beyond the curriculum, just um, uh, parks, other, other partnerships that we have. Uh, promotional events. Uh, what they do is they do a series of regional kickoffs at schools where they actually bring uh, the curriculum to life in, in the schools. And this was a, these are some images from a school we did in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. And uh, this school, by the way, has a garden on the premises. It's a progressive school. And uh, very well re re uh, received event. We have six different stations that we set up within the gymnasium. We had 200 kids go through the stations. One of the stations is they actually learn how to cast. They also uh, play the game. They learn a number of different things. And we run these events as part of the program all over the country to introduce the program uh, to, to teachers in key schools. And Discovery Education has another benefit. They have 128,000 teachers that they are part of their Discovery Education network that are all around the country. And those 128,000 people are ambassadors for a program like this. And they're charged with actually implementing these in the school. So it wasn't just one big thing where you produce a website, you throw it out there, and you have that. We have 128,000 advocates now promoting this at the school level. And there are posters and games and giveaways and prizes that go along with this. That a lot of detail I'm not going to get into. But uh, so far, and uh, this program is now in its, uh, uh, no, it's, it's hard to school year. The first year we got a late start because of when we started, but two full school years. 879,000 kids have participated in uh, two or more um, of the, the curriculum, okay? And, um, you know, I think that uh, that is a pretty, pretty decent number to uh, move on with. Now, uh, what are we going to do? We think the program is successful. We think by the end of our fiscal year that number will be over a million, which was the original objective for the program. Uh, we're going to extend the program into middle school. We're going to run a 6 through 8 component. Uh, we are going to develop some Spanish language materials uh, because that is, that is needed. Uh, we're going to do uh, more webinars with, these, uh, with this education network to promote the lesson plans. And uh, this year, at the, there's an event in D.C. called Constitution Gardens. Well, we're going to take that over. Uh, Discovery's going to have us take that over. We're going to actually going to run an in-school program on the mall with all the stations uh, available, and Discovery's going to bring their people in. Uh, and the other great thing about Discovery is they help promote this program, too. Uh, they run PSAs for this throughout all their channels, and uh, uh, they've been a really, really uh, good partner. So. Uh, in addition to that, you know, the other outreach we do, I talked a little bit uh, earlier. You can flip to the next one if you could. Uh, these are just some of the other programs that we run. And, um, you know, since 07, these programs have introduced over uh, 2.5 million kids to uh, fishing, boating, and outdoor recreational activities. So, uh, any questions on that? Yes? I just wanted to say, I'm here in actually at a fishing area for the farm hour group that I've ever worked on, and I had come across your website and it taught me tremendously. It's a very good website for you to get ideas. I developed the stations around the same thing that you had going, and I'm really, really excited for that. That gave me a lot of help. Well, thank you. And they're all free, too. for Frank, if we would. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mentioned earlier, I worked uh, a long time with Nature Bridge, actually it was Headlands Institute, Olympic Institute, and Yosemite Institute, and um, gosh, probably my first work with the <coughs> institutes was way back in the early 80s at Golden Gate, when uh, it was a residential campus, uh, very well done, with a lot of environmental education, and a very subscription program, meaning that the families paid, came in, and it was a week or more sometimes, yeah, embedded in the park, and it was incredible. 
But it was in Marin County, a very wealthy county, and a lot of uh, families could afford to do this. The really great thing in the last few years is the institutes in now Nature Bridge has totally changed their approach with communities. They've really gone out and sought grants and donations so they could start scholarshipping underserved communities and bringing them in from Marin City and Oakland and San Francisco. Students that would never have ever contacted nature to that extent. There are students living in San Francisco that don't see San Francisco Bay their entire lives. Oakland, the same thing. It's amazing to think that. And yet, because of Nature Bridge, because of our Parks Conservancy and our other education programming entities at Golden Gate, we're bringing tens of thousands of students all over Golden Gate and its organizations like this. And again, the Park Service couldn't do it alone. Uh, it's an amazing program, and I'm very proud to introduce to you Vanessa Morrill. Uh, she's the Washington, D.C. Director of Nature Bridge. Nature Bridge is expanding to other national park units, and I'm sure she'll explain that a little bit. Uh, she's responsible for the leadership and management of Nature Bridge's East Coast expansion and national policy initiatives. Currently, she's coordinating a demonstration project in Prince William Forest, a national park unit on the East Coast. Um, Director Jarvis is very interested in what he's seen at Golden Gate and Yosemite and Olympic, bringing it to the East Coast. And uh, it, it's a very exciting time for us in that respect. Um, she also handles legislative affairs and organizational relationships in the nation's capital. Before joining Nature Bridge, she was the Senior Director of Allied Development at the National Parks Conservation Association. And while working there, she worked with other organizations and to support national parks and grow their constituency and their national basis. Vanessa. Thanks, Rich. Um, so as Rich mentioned, Nature Bridge started 40 years ago in Yosemite National Park as Yosemite National Institute and then expanded to Golden Gate, uh, to Olympic, and most recently Santa Monica Mountains. Um, and as Rich also mentioned, we'll be doing our first East Coast program in Prince William Forest Park um, in this April, coming this April. Um, so we've been around for 40 years, and we've, in that time we've reached, we've put one million students through our programs. While we're proud of a million students um, in 40 years, these are very time and resource intensive programs, we want to reach the next million students in a fraction of that time. So how do we do that? Um, the mission of the organization is connecting youth to the natural world um, and creating that next generation of, of stewards. Um, we, um, we're a fee-based program. We're a nonprofit fee-based program. But as, as Rich mentioned, we have really worked uh, over the past years uh, to be able to provide scholarships so that we are serving the demographic where we are located. Um, so right now, we are scholarshipping about 35% of the students that come through our programs. Uh, we work directly with schools and teachers. Um, the sort of bread and butter program for us is week-long residential field science education in the national park setting. And we're one of many national park partners that do that. Um, but we also do uh, leadership training and teacher professional development. Um, and for those, for those school programs, that involves um, pre-trip uh, pre visits to the schools, that involves post-trip visits to the schools. Um, so it's a very close working relationship with the schools and the lay teachers. Um, you know, one of the advantages to working with the, with the schools is that, uh, that you know, if you're, if you're serving the full demographic in the area where you're located, you're not being selective, and you are reaching those uh, Latino youth, um, and you are, you are reaching um, uh, all of those audiences. The other thing that we're seeing is that, uh, you know, family is, the family unit is a great unit to work with, but we have, we've skipped a generation. So we are seeing teachers and adult chaperones coming with these students who have not had the experience themselves. And the program is, much, is, is as much about getting them comfortable and engaged as it is the students sometimes. Um, so there, those are some advantages with working directly with the, with the schools. 
Um, I wish that, uh, I was hoping that our new website, you can, you can learn a lot about Nature Bridge on our website, naturebridge.org, but I was hoping that the new website was going to have launched uh, by today. Uh, I think it's going to be tomorrow. Because we have on the homepage some student, teacher, and parent testimonials that are just incredible. So around the question of does it work, um, if you listen to these testimonials, you will, um, you will have an answer to that. But from our, uh, and I've got some copies of, of a brochure that we have, um, from our brochure, one of the a fifth grade field science students said, science here is different from at home. Science here isn't a class, but an experience. Um, and that's what we're all working towards, is providing the experience. Um, so it, when you have a chance, take a look at the website um, and, and listen to those testimonials. But, some other proof that it, that, that it works is that we have schools that have been coming for 30 years. And a lot has changed for those schools in 30 years. Um, they, there's not transportation funding. Um, we've become much more concerned about the liability of, of getting the kids um, off the school, <coughs> school grounds. Um, to the transportation point, I heard somebody say, you know, we've got, we've got buses, we just don't have gas or drivers. Um, so there's a, real, there's a real opportunity there to develop some transportation funds to get um, more kids into parks and other public lands and have these first experiences. Um, we're also seeing with the students that where we've missed a generation, that they are bringing their parents back. They're having the experience and then bringing their parents back and they want their parents uh, to, to have a sense of, of what they experienced. And one of our 10th grade field science students said, I taught my parents about plankton and how zooplankton has to get their food and phytoplankton makes their own food. My family was amazed. The way you taught me, that's the way I'm going to teach my family and pass it on to other people and that person might pass it on to the world. It's the little things that make a big difference. So, you know, there is a, a chain reaction here that, that is positive, and it starts with the, with the student. Um, one of the, I was just sort of mentioning what has, what's changed uh, from the school perspective in the, in the 40 years, but from an organizational perspective, we used to think, if we open the doors, they'll come. And with the last, um, with our last endeavor, we realized a lot has changed, and it's not, um, we're all competing uh, for these, to offer these experiences to young people. So, you know, now the organization has a sales and marketing position for every campus. I mean, that's not something that, that we had um, at the outset. Um, and, you know, I think we do, in some ways I wanted to just stand up and say, you know, what, what Robin and Jason and, and Andrew said, because there are so many corollaries between the health crisis and the education crisis. Um, but, uh, building on building on what they said, you know, what do, what do we need to to turn this around, and what are the opportunities? And I would just say that um, I would outline three uh, three things that I think we we need to focus on, and and one is really the cross promotion by partners. I and mean, Robin Robin mentioned this, but we all know that one experience does not create a steward or an outdoor enthusiast. And so, how do we cross promote as a community? that we move them from that, that, that first experience that may be you know, part of their school uh, experience to something they do with their families, to something that they decide to try on their own, to, uh, to service learning, to um, scholarship, uh, to stewardship. Um, so that's part of, and I think that's, that cross-promotion and moving young people along a continuum of, of experiences is part of the retention. Um, where we see that there's a problem with, the, with retaining um, folks in, in, um, in our areas of interest. So cross-promotion by partners. Uh, I would also say policies and programs that connect, can connect us directly to schools. Um, there was mention of the Department of Transportation and the Federal Lands Highway Program and what that does for outdoor recreation opportunities. Uh, we really need to work to get the Department of Education engaged. And you would think that from the work I do, that that would be um, a, a natural ally and an obvious engagement. It is not. Um, we have been un under such a testing paradigm um, and development of standards and whatnot that, um, that 
the type of opportunities we provide are not areas where the Department of Education uh, is, is naturally and immediately engaged.